troops there in a relatively peaceful and stable environment. I think the way- But to jump down the, the president's throat because he actually had to make the decision in an impossible situation, I think does a grave disservice to this committee's ability to do effective and honest nonpartisan oversight. Costs were going to be borne here. There was no easy option. Now it's clear they never had a plan. The president. But regardless of how you feel about the decision to remove troops from Afghanistan, I think we can all agree that the withdrawal was an unmitigated disaster. Where they will be based and how they'll be used. In other words, we. On August 31st, hundreds of Americans left behind the 13 service members murdered. The president stood in the East Room of the White House and called the withdrawal, quote, an extraordinary success, close quote. I fear the president is delusional. This was an extraordinary, this wasn't an extraordinary success. It was an extraordinary disaster. It will go down in history as one of the greatest failures of American leadership. Administration drawdown, not a 19-month threat. It is clear, it is obvious to all of us that the war in Afghanistan did not end on the terms that we wanted with the Taliban now in power in Kabul. Although the NEO was unprecedented and is the largest air evacuation in history, was a tactical, operational, and logistical success evacuating 124,000 people. The war was a strategic failure. And the circumstances in August were anything but ideal. I think the Doha Agreement and the signing of the Doha Agreement had a, had a really pernicious effect on the government of Afghanistan and on its military. Psychological more than anything else, but we set a date certain for when we were going to leave and when they could expect all assistance to end. So for the first time, there was something out there in front of them, a, a future hypothetical condition that we believe is going to occur. We felt that it's been my position and my judgment that if we went below an advisory level of 2,500, I believed that the government of Afghanistan would likely collapse and that the military would follow. And one might go before the other, but I believe that was going to be the inevitable result of drawing down to zero. And I've expressed that opinion in writing for, for quite a while. Now, so taking a look at that, that was sort of my, my best judgment on that. I believe that, uh, so going below 2,500, I think, was the other sort of nail in the coffin, if you will, that allowed that the Afghan government, that, that, that led to conditions where, first of all, we could no longer see what was happening to the force mm -hmm. because our advisors were no longer down there with, with those units. And, and those prisoners, many of those prisoners, went back to, to fill. As a part of that agreement, we agreed to cease conducting air operations against the Taliban. So the Taliban got stronger. Uh, they increased their offensive operations against the Afghan security forces. And the Afghans were losing a lot of people uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, in addition to that, we, uh, we caused them to release 5,000 prisoners, uh, you know, and, and those prisoners, many of those prisoners, went back to, to fill the ranks of the Taliban. So they got a lot stronger. Uh, they continued their attacks. Uh, you know, we, we uh, got smaller. 